Uh, yeah, yeah, there was hard bondage there. And, yeah, there was fear, and there was death, and there was hell. But our flesh was satisfied. Yeah, and that's why you can have, you know, people like T.D. Jakes or uh, Olsten or, uh, you know, so many of the, the others out there, those, those multimillionaires, have their, their, their mega churches just packed with people. Because what's being fed, you know, is the flesh. And as long as the flesh is happy, they think everything is, is just great. You know? Yeah, God, you know, wasn't giving them leeks and onions and, you know, and, and paddock. <laughs> you know, whatever else your favorite fit. No. What was he giving them? Manna from heaven. Supernatural food. That sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness. They got enough you know, to take care of every day. Five days a week and twice as much on Friday to carry them over the Sabbath. Yeah. Water out of a rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they, they weren't eating filet mignon, you know, and, and, but, but they had what they needed. God provided for them their needs. Number three, and then it, it, it's the lies of a wicked imagination. Genesis 6, 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil <coughs> continually. Uh, let's see, Deuteronomy. Over there, Deuteronomy 29.19. Deuteronomy 29, verse 19. And it came to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Lo, I walk in the imagination of my heart <coughs> to add drunkenness unto thirst. Proverbs 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. How about Jeremiah? What does Jeremiah have to deal with that? Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. I don't blame him. Jeremiah 7, verse 8, verse. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Verse 13. And now because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you heard not. And I called you, but you answered not. Verse 23 and 24. But this thing I commanded, I them saying, Obey my voice. And I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined thine ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Uh, of course, you know, this is Nebuchadnezzar's come in, taken 
Jerusalem and taken Judah and all the Jews are there, taken most of them into captivity in Babylon and God keeps telling them through Jeremiah, look, those of you that are still in the land, just obey him. I sent him, just obey Nebuchadnezzar, do it, and everything will be all right. They wouldn't do it. You don't, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Sure enough, what they do? And they drug Jeremiah with him. They made him go. With, and he's warning them. And while they're there in Egypt, he's warning them. And they told him, we don't care. Chapter 41, 42 in Jeremiah, we don't care what you say. We're going to do what we say. That what's in our own heart to do. Okay. God warned you. He told you what's going to happen if you do. Yeah. None of them ever made it back. The ones who went into captivity into Babylon. Okay. It was a handful of them that survived that long, and their descendants, the ones who came back. Those are the ones God had the mercy on. Romans chapter 1. <coughs> Romans 1, 21 and 22. Again, some verses we've read a couple of times here in the last few weeks. Romans 1, 21, 22. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Second Corinthians ten. Second Corinthians ten, verses four and five. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The idle mind, and I've learned this, the idle mind is fertile ground for the devil to plant wicked imaginations. One of the best ways to keep the mind from turning to wicked imaginations is to keep it filled with the things of God. And again, it's something you have to consciously deliberately do. You know, if you're constantly reading the Bible, memorizing, quoting scripture to yourself, praying to the Lord, singing the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to yourself, listening to music, listening to sermons, you know, reading books about Christian topics, okay, then you're leaving little room and little opportunity for the garbage to get put in there. The greatest ally that the devil has in his arsenal, the tactic that he uses, is idle time. And most idle time gets filled up with, at least in this country, entertainment. And we are we are an entertainment oriented society. Uh, and you know, I've said this before, but the greatest tool the devil has ever had okay, in this area is the screen. Uh, whether it's a TV screen, a computer screen, <laughs> the theater, uh, an iPad, or a smartphone screen. I mean, when screens entered into our culture en masse in the 20th century, you know, along with the World Wide Web, uh, it, it, it gave the devil one of the most effective tools he has ever had to infect people's minds with wicked imaginations. Doing my research here, 
It's estimated 85% of born again men look at pornography on a screen on a regular basis. I think that one shocked me. This one shocked me in doing this. It's estimated that a similar number of born again women are doing the same. Why? Easy access. Pornography is so easily accessed and available now with the so called privacy, you know, that you can supposedly do it on the screens with the World Wide Web. You know, of course, that's a lie. I mean, number one, God knows. I'm not hiding it from him. The data gatherers know. I don't care what they tell you. You know, uh, <laughs> you're being tracked if you're doing it. Let me tell you. You know, and that's why the numbers have grown to such proportions. Yeah. The and let's face it, pornography is a lie. The wicked imagination of the lie of pornography is at epidemic levels. You know, amongst born again believers, my sister was telling me a story uh, in church she used to attend, where a young man came forward one morning and stood before the church, and asked the young married man, would go and confess, I have a problem. And I want to confess it and ask for y'all to pray for me. Of course, sad thing is, man, everybody treated him like a leper after that. But you know, one good thing that can't as he was up there, three other young men came up front and confessed the same problem. Okay, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. And it's because of the ease of the access to this stuff through screens and the internet. Now again, I, there are tools that could be used, and if used wisely and used intelligently and used carefully, but man, the stuff, I mean, they even, what do they call them? Uh, is VPNs? Stuff that they have that allow you to be able to anonymously get onto the World Wide Web and to get into what they call the deep web. You know, the, the, the average web that most people deal with out there is supposedly, you know, it's like an iceberg, you know, like 15% of what's really out there. And then there's this huge, you know, uh, and so many people, from what I understand, are making use. Uh, and that's what they're doing. You know, and that's why, you know, along with pornography, we have a, a sex slave trade at the live and well of the world today. You know, it's why we have, you know, uh, the fact that uh, you know, those that target children, I mean, some of the cases that I listened to when I was sitting on the federal grand jury, uh, you know, we had one. Uh, it, they just they just closed the case just recently. It was from a man in Gardner, where I live. You know that you know I was sitting on the grand jury for the indictment of this two years ago. Just by you know, uh, and I mean I'm talking hundreds of videos, hundreds of pictures. Hundreds of children affected. You want y'all want to know what he got sentenced? Ten years. Ten years. You know, in a minimum security prison. You know, you know, uh, you know, it'll be a federal prison, but you know, the one over here in, in Gardner, that prison over there. Most of the inmates over there, sex offenders, minimum security prison. Ten years. Ten years. Pedophilia. Of course.
course, again, the, the UN right now making a big, big push. I mean, you know about it. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the other men making a big push to decriminalize pedophilia. Oh, way deeper than that. You know, wicked imagination. Wicked imagination. Yeah. Man, whatever happened to Psalm 101, verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. <laughs> it all started in the 1950s. Everybody had a television set and an antenna. <laughs> you remember the <laughs> forest of, of aluminum antennas yeah. suddenly in everybody's neighborhood. And we went from having three stations to dozens when cable came in. And then hundreds with satellite, and who knows how many you can get with, you know, uh, other stuff now, just live streaming and all this kind of stuff goes on. I don't have any of that. Uh, uh, I just decided it was just junk. It wasn't worth my time. It wasn't worth the money. Uh, you know, I mean, first of all, though, you know, the TV was in the living room. You know, of course, I mean. Again, you know, you, 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 how, how many of you remember the one that was just the big tube that sat on a pedestal and had the controls below it? And, okay, I guess I'm really old. <laughs> you know, and then it went to the big cabinet units. Oh, yeah. And, all, and they had all you know, these big giant cabinet units and all these kind of things and stuff. And, you know, but it was in the living room. Mm -hmm. That's where it was. You know, and then eventually got to be where, you know, they made them small, too. You put one in the bedroom. And then we're in the kids' rooms. You know? Uh, then, you know, it went to you know, computers. We started having, you know, home computers. You know, with the big tower, big, you know, all that desktops, laptops, iPads, smartphones. Now we're Dick Tracy and you can have the wrist. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's funny we sit here and we, we think back to these things and you know and how silly they were. You know, you know the old original Star Trek series with this communicator, the flip phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, and now <coughs> they have manipulated things to the point where you really you don't, you can't be without one almost. You can't function because. You know, everything had, when I was collecting there for a couple of years after, uh, you know, uh, Lowe's graciously uh, let me go. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to find work and so, you know, I had to put in the, you had to have, not a home phone, they insisted you had a cell phone. And if you didn't have one, guess what, they would provide one for you free of, free of charge. <coughs> Courtesy of the American taxpayer. <laughs> uh, that's how it is. You know, I mean, we're we're joined at the thumb and mouse to our screens. I mean, it is literally an addiction. You know, I just just today going to and from church today at stoplights stop sign, I had four people I had to honk the horn at because they're doing this. Yeah. Instead of paying attention to their driving. You know, how many accidents have happened out there because of people trying to text? Of course, of course now, you know, the, the, the new cars now, they have it set up so you can voice text. So you can pay attention to your traffic but that they want you to stay they want you on this stuff they want you you know so <coughs> controlled by it and I'm going to tell you guarantee the temptation to do things that you ought not and to listen to things that you ought not will come along if you ain't careful you know, and I'm, I, I'm, folks can call me what they want. They can tell me I'm an idiot. They can tell me I'm an alarmist. You know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't know what I'm talking about. But, I'm going to tell you what. If and when you find yourself, 
or your husband, or your wife, or your children, looking at pornography, looking at other worldly, hellish things that they ought not. Just remember what you said about the preacher who tried to warn you. Now, it doesn't matter what it is that your flesh, the world, or the devil are trying to sell you in, just like Pilgrim's Progress there in Vanity Fair. You know, when it, what they're, it's a lie. It's a lie. And the sooner that you get that truth through your head and your heart and decide to start doing everything that the Lord says you ought to be doing and quit doing everything that the Lord says that you ought not be doing, then you'll begin to experience a whole lot more of the peace and the joy and the contentment that's available to you as a born-again child of God. Okay? It's all a lie. I don't care what they're selling. I don't care how they package it up. I don't care what they tell you, how they try to smooth you, how they try to ridicule you, you know, whatever it is that they do, uh, you know, to, to try and force you <coughs> to accept it. What they're pushing. It's a lie. It's a lie. Just, just assume right from the get-go. That's what it is. And go by this. They're going to make you stand out. Is it going to make you be, you know, a, a, an oddball? You know, and seem strange. Yeah. Praise God Almighty, yes it will. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, doesn't matter who we are, where we are, Lord, we're facing those three enemies all the time, Lord, our flesh, the world, and the devil. And their number one tactic Lord, as we know, is lies and deception and deceit. And they've got a lot of tools that they use. And they can bring an awful lot of pressure to bear. And Lord, we have to be awake and aware. We need to keep our eyes open and our heads up. And we need to pay attention. We need to be cautious. Or it's important, Lord. It's important because we're here to represent you. And if we buy into the garbage, then what have we got to show the world that they can look at us and say that you're no different than me? And Woe be to us if we get caught in something really vile. Oh, they'll pounce on that one. They love when that happens. So, Lord, we pray. Dear God, help us to be awake and aware. Help us to be cautious. Help us to be careful. Help us to remember, Lord, we're in a war. We're in a war. And we've got to approach things with that mentality. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the day. Lord, carry us safely, Lord, to our homes now as we get ready to close the service. Watch over us, Lord, and protect us as we travel. Lord, take us safely, Lord, to our homes, to our loved ones. Lord, and before we Go to our rest for the night, Father, and we come to you and spend time in prayer and spend time in your word. Lord, we pray, speak to us out of the scriptures. Open the eyes of our understanding. Lord, 
prepare us and equip us for the warfare. And we pray and we ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we are dismissed for this evening.